tonight I'm being joined by Dennis Curran, Matt Loos, and Dennis McGee from NAB. We're going to be reviewing an announcement that the Alliance made today and uh, detailing the direction of the Open Data Center Alliance moving forward. And with that, I'll hand it off to Dennis. Thanks, Alison. Hello, all. I'd like to introduce myself and my two colleagues here at National Australia Bank. My name is Dennis Curran. I'm Head of Strategy and Innovation and have responsibility for coordinating our alliance participation. And uh, I'm Matt Louth, so I'm, the, I'm one of the Principal Security Architects uh, and for the Alliance I'm on the Technical Coordination Committee and am the Security Services Working Group Chair. Hi, and I'm Dennis McGee, the General Manager of Infrastructure and Security Services and the NAB's Steering Group Member on the ODCA. Uh, I'm today delighted to welcome you to this webcast. Uh, we are announcing the Open Data Centre Alliance's release of our first user-driven cloud computing usage models. First, I would like to emphasise the purpose of the Open Data Centre Alliance. The Alliance is an independent consortium comprised of global business leaders who have come together to provide a, a unified customer vision for the cloud. The Alliance is led by 12 steering committee members comprising IT leaders from around the world, the US, Europe and Asia Pacific. The steering committee, committee members are BMW, Capgemini, China Life, China Unicom, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, Lockheed Martin, Marriott International, National Australia Bank, Terramark, the Walt Disney Company and UBS. Since the Alliance's formation in last October, we have seen a quadrupling of membership. We've expanded into collaborations with our industry standard groups and we are now expanding membership to solution providers. During this webcast, I will talk about the Alliance's progress to date. I will then hand over to Matt and then Dennis to talk about the usage model models. Then Alison Klein from Intel will talk about driving the adoption in the industry. Let me now turn to slide two. It's been an this kind of body. In October 2010, the Alliance newly established itself to be the first truly customer-driven body with a vision to define comprehensive requirements for cloud. I believe it is fair to say that industry standard bodies would typically take one to two years to establish anything like this number of standards. Participation in and enthusiasm for the Alliance has exceeded all of my expectations. We have surged to over 280 members who collectively represent an IT annual spend in excess, in excess of 100 billion. And we are continuing to receive membership applications. A foundation goal when the Alliance set out in October was to collaborate with other sections of the industry so that our customer driven requirements help drive the nascent cloud industry forward with an emphasis on customers real issues and concerns. We are actively collaborating with the Cloud Security Alliance, the Distributed Management Task Force, DMTF, OASIS and the TM Forum. We have also expanded Alliance memberships to solution providers. Again, these are industry lead leaders such as Dell, EMC, Parallels and Red Hat. I am sure that we will be able to welcome other solution providers to the Alliance in the future. It is this participation, enthusiasm and collaboration that has helped the Alliance deliver the first release of user-driven requirements for the cloud. The Alliance's initial focus and what we have released today are usage models that we regard as critical to the viability of cloud to potential customers. With growing membership and the momentum we have generated, we are looking forward to this collaborative approach continuing. I will now turn to slide three. I would like to reinforce that the value of ODCA is it is customer driven. It is the first time customers 
are advancing their requirements for cloud. Today we deliver the first release of the Alliance's first eight usage models. Members set the priority for these usage models. The initial tranche deal with some of the most important issues IT and businesses face when adopting cloud computing. Issues such as security, regulatory requirements and environmental impact. We will cover these in more detail in a moment. As a customer body, we are concerned about critical but simple questions. The usage, usage models address questions like, how do you keep your environment secure in the cloud? How do you account for carbon emissions in a cloud environment? In a complicated marketplace, how do you compare features and prices of differing cloud service providers? How do you trust and verify that your provider is protecting your data? Indeed, how could we pre-qualify a service provider? The usage model's direction and overview is led by the Alliance's Technical Coordination Committee. The models are created by working groups drawn from our contributing members. By Alliance members adopting these usage models, we intend to accelerate cloud adoption. We want to promote industry efficiency by customers and providers having consistent shared expectations. By meeting these requirements, enterprises, providers and regulators will have better confidence to move forward with cloud service utilisation. I will now turn to slide four for a brief overview of the ODCA. As mentioned earlier, the Alliance now has 280 members. It comprises a steering committee of leading businesses representing many different industries and different parts of the globe. Each of the steering committee members share a common vision on the challenges facing adoption of cloud computing and common goals to promote faster adoption of cloud services. The steering committee members and contributing members are responsible for developing the usage models. Usage models are open for comment to the whole membership when they reach version 0.7. I would like to mention the role Intel plays. Intel has been asked to serve as a non-voting technical advisor to the Alliance. They act on direction of the steering committee and participate in working groups. Intel bring a wide experience in organising industry standard bodies that most customer enterprises simply can't replicate. Now let's move on to slide five. <clears throat> the Alliance's stated goal is to accelerate cloud adoption. With the delivery of solutions based on the Alliance's stated requirements, we expect to accelerate cloud adoption to the tune of $50 billion. The underlying assumption is based on research from IDC and Bain. We estimate standards will help achieve a 25% acceleration of cloud services, resulting in a 15% reduction in operating costs based on Bain's forecast of $142 billion in annual spend within five years. With this acceleration, we believe that the market for cloud will deliver inherent operational efficiency, representing 25 billion benefit in IT spending efficiency. I'll now turn to slide six. The Alliance's vision for the cloud is to drive new levels of IT agility. We believe that there are four elements fundamental to driving efficiency across a broad range of enterprise requirements. These are, first, secure federation. Security is fundamental to every cloud service and underpins the trust necessary to make a cloud a viable industry. We also believe that security must be maintained across a federation of cloud services. The Alliance believes that there will be few, if any, providers that would be capable of providing all enterprise requirements from under one roof. So the services will need to be securely federate to deliver a broad enough coverage. Second, automation of IT infrastructure. To deal with the scale and complexity of 
enterprise requirements, we believe that services will have to be highly automated to drive efficiency, reliability and recovery. Multi-tenant operations increase the level of service sophistication and make automation an ever more critical requirement. Third, common management and policy for data centre resources. Many industries are regulated in different ways. Some, such as financial institutions, are subject to tight regulatory controls to protect the integrity of sovereign financial systems. Other industries will face more general regulatory regimes such as privacy requirements, listing rules and the like. Irrespective of the type of regulation, enterprises need to have a clear perspective on how to manage risk when using cloud services. Finally, transparency in the cloud, service capability and metrics. Another element of trust is the ability of service providers to demonstrate their performance in both absolute and relative terms. This promotes viable commercial contracts and a competitive market with fungible resources. As part of the Alliance's initial efforts, we wanted to create a vision for the cloud which started documenting our view of the long-term requirements for cloud computing based on these factors. The Alliance's initial usage models based on these fundamental views and, and address the most urgent challenges today facing these four areas. I'll now turn to slide seven to introduce the usage models and deal with each of these in more detail on the subsequent slides. This gives you an, interview, uh, an overview of the eight initial usage models that we are now releasing as version 1.0. They are aligned under the Alliance's four fundamental elements of cloud, secure federation, automation of IT infrastructure, common management and policy, and transparency of service capability and metrics. These eight usage models are endorsed by the Alliance for immediate use by members. I'll now hand over to Matt and Dennis to take you through a little more detail of the usage models starting with the two in Secure Federation. Matt. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, can we jump onto the next slide, please? We would usually say, arguably, security is the greatest uh, challenge to cloud adoption. Uh, I don't think this is at all arguable. Simply put, assuring security in the cloud is the biggest challenge to adoption. Really, it doesn't matter what industry sector you look at. Uh, Broad-based cloud adoption means that there will be sensitive data, such as consumer details, in the cloud. There will also be a dependence on the cloud to execute end-to-end -end processes that, should they fail, could have significant reputation and cost impacts to customers. With the risk of breaches, value of brand and potential penalties, in penalties imposed by regulators on the line, this is uh, driving many enterprises to stall the use of cloud services. Uh, so getting it right, or getting security right, is the foundation. It is the highest priority for the Alliance to develop in our initial tranche of usage models. Um, many of the subsequent usage models which we touch on today depend on security as a foundation element. Uh, the Alliance's first release uh, for security covers two usage models, uh, provider security assurance and security compliance monitoring. Uh, in provider security assurance, we establish a customer expectation on the specific security requirements of a particular cloud provider. Uh, it identifies both success and failure scenarios about cloud security and also how customers should assure compliance with security policies. Uh, as part of the Alliance uh, initial efforts, we wanted to create a vision for the cloud which started documenting our view of the long-term requirements for cloud computing based on these factors. Uh, the Alliance's initial usage models based on these fundamental views and address uh, the most urgent challenges today facing these four areas. Uh, I'll now turn to slide seven to introduce the usage models and deal with each of these in more detail on subsequent slides. Um, sorry, we also recognise that the different industries, uh, different enterprises and different uses have uh, different levels of appropriate security. So we have defined security tiers from the highest level, um, platinum to the least, which is bronze. Uh, the tiered model provides the differentiation of service delivery. It also promotes competitive offerings which allow for feature and cost differentiation. 
It also uh, allows enterprises to determine what security capability is being offered. The Alliance's intention here is to ensure that the cloud can provide the right level of security at the right price points. Uh, you see this practical approach in many of the usage models. Ultimately, to accelerate cloud adoption, customers need the right services that are robust and economic. Uh, security compliance monitoring is a compatriot usage model to assurance. It follows the maxim, trust and verify. Uh, of the framework for security capabilities uh, is set, we need to uh, then be able to determine that service providers are meeting the promised levels. Uh, enterprises need mechanisms that allow real-time monitoring of security delivery to policy. Now, the compliance monitoring usage model uh, describes the need for real-time monitoring of cloud security. Uh, it defines what is needed to be monitored and documented uh, the need and documents the need to deliver monitoring to both customers and third-party certification agents. Uh, I'll now turn to page 9 to cover cloud infrastructure automation. Okay, we, again we have two usage models in this uh, first release that address the key challenge to rapid cloud adoption. Uh, these usage models are virtual machine interoperability and input-output control. I think you can see that this slide, these usage models are for, true, for the true geeks amongst us. Uh, we get to talk about hypervisors and quas, which is uh, quality of service. Uh, the challenge here is to deliver the cost, efficiency and agility promises of cloud. These promises can only be delivered consistently and reliability, uh, reliably uh, with high degrees of automation. So these usage models, whilst necessarily technical, are fundamental to consumers. Uh, in the virtual machine interoperability usage model, we deal with consumers' needs to select cloud providers based on defined cost, performance and scalability. Uh, today, every cloud provider chooses particular implementations of virtualizations, whether it be under one or multiple hypervisors. While today there are open virtualization format, or OVF standards, which provide, my, uh, which provide for migration of workloads uh, at a container level, or the virtual machine level, there isn't a consistent way to manage virtual machines across multiple environments and multiple providers, or what the techos amongst us would call a heterogeneous hypervisor environment. So the uh, usage model specifies which areas associated with the virtual machine interoperability need to be resolved. Uh, creation of a new management interfaces that are consistent amongst all hypervisors to work with the open virtual format to enable true interoperability of hypervisors. Uh, the input-output control usage model addresses a key challenge to ensure the ability to manage defined service level agreements. Uh, again, this is a, a more technical standard. Uh, it provides virtualization solutions to establish quality of service level controls for input-output performance. These controls uh, are necessary to protect against the risk of input-output imbalance across virtual machines caused by single applications or users consuming the platform's full bandwidth. Uh, to protect performance, there is a key need for policy-based controls to allocate bandwidth quotas for each application and virtual machine. Uh, the key benefits to these usage models are to promote agility and efficiency uh, of the underlying infrastructure. Um, we'll now turn to slide 10 and I'll pass to Dennis Curran who will provide an overview of the common management and policy usage case. Thanks, Matt. The Alliance challenge here is to address common management and policy controls. Our first usage model is to address the regulatory framework. It's important to realise that all industries have regulatory and statutory obligations, so this again is a high priority for the Alliance to be able to accelerate cloud adoption. Over time, the usage models in this area will deal with inter-cloud management and integration of service level agreements and policies into a holistic management structure. We will need to address the complexity of multiple regulatory environments. The regulatory framework is not a very technical usage model. However, it has significant technical ramifications for cloud customers and providers alike. Naturally, regulation and statute tend to be country specific. It is also the case that there is often collaboration between regulators and a degree of commonality or harmonisation of policy. Privacy is an example of one area where many countries adhere to the same or similar policy. Customers and providers need to understand who carries the risk of non-compliance and what changes occur in different jurisdictions that may affect the ongoing compliance regime. There is also an industry efficiency issue to deal with. For every customer to carry out independent compliance verification with providers 
may not be efficient or sustainable. Similarly, regulators may be reluctant to accept third-party verification. So this usage model sets out a framework to build upon and the Alliance will undertake further development work in this area. I'll now turn to transparency of cloud service offerings, the final area for today, which is on slide 11. The final set of usage models address three challenges under the banner of transparency, creating a, a standard that allows effective comparison of cloud services, allowing for a way of comparing cloud service pricing, and standard ways of comparing cloud performance. This leads to a vision of transparency to promote free-flowing markets where services are well understood, pricing is based on standards models, and performance characteristics measure real value delivered within a services context. Ultimately, efficient markets are the reason that cloud will appeal to customers. In the first release of usage models for transparency, we have three standards. First is the service catalog. This sets out definitions to promote reasonable comparison between competing providers of service. Second is the standard units of measure which intends to close the gap between individual metrics of performance, availability, reliability, and a host of others, to a customer view of end-to-end -end performance. Finally, we address the carbon footprint standards for reporting. This is a topical issue for many enterprises in many countries. Some of you may know it is particularly a hot issue in Australia with the announcement of the carbon tax. Many customers and providers alike will have aspirations or obligations to report their total carbon footprint across their supply chain. Given the Alliance's desire to accelerate the adoption of cloud services and the relative importance of IT to enterprises' overall carbon footprint, it is critical that the cloud service providers are able to report carbon emissions at a customer level. Again, this is a developing area. So the usage model sets out a framework that the Alliance will further develop over time. That completes our overview of the eight usage models that comprise the Alliance's 1.0 release. I'll now pass over to Alison Klein from Intel, who will take you through the Alliance's view on promoting industry adoption. Alison. Thanks so much. I think you've got a good foundation now on the mission of the Open Data Center Alliance and the first eight usage models that form um, customer requirements for cloud services. One of the visions of the steering committee at the formation of the Alliance is a, a bond with the industry to drive these requirements to delivery into terms of solutions. And they've targeted two ways to do that. Uh, one is through partnerships with industry standard organizations, and the second is through the formation of a special class of membership called Solution Provider Membership that was announced about a month ago to allow members of the industry to participate in the Alliance and provide unique feedback to the work groups without sacrificing the nature of a customer-driven uh, organization. Today we have the first steps towards enabling these two engagements with the industry. I'll start with the industry collaboration. The Alliance announced intentions to collaborate with four very important industry standards groups today. The first one is the Cloud Security Alliance, and the collaboration there is on the first two usage models that were discussed today focused on security. The, the intent here is to look for um, existing and needed security standards to be developed to enable delivery of the security requirements that the Alliance has chartered. The second opportunity is with the DMTF, a leading enterprise management group. And the focus there primarily is to extend their OVF standard or enhance their standard to address the requirements associated with VM interoperability and the management of um, in multiple hypervisors VMs working together. 
The third area of collaboration is with OASIS, which is an industry standards body that has issued many standards associated with service, services associated with the cloud. And they have articulated a number of standards that can apply to the service-focused uh, requirements that the, out, the Alliance has outlined. And finally, the ECLC, or Enterprise Cloud Leadership Council, a part of the TM Forum, who has been associated with establishing services and service standards to address the need for common terms in cloud service market. The second area is the announcement of the initial solutions provider members. And you can see on this slide that there are four companies that form the initial group of these solutions provider members and are leaders both in delivery of cloud hardware and cloud virtualization software. On the slide you can see a quote from EMC about their intention to work with the Alliance to further the objective of these requirements and bring innovative cloud solutions to the marketplace. This should be an interesting area to look for as more industry players join the group as the usage models have become public. Thanks very much. I'll hand it back over. Thanks, Allison. <clears throat> so looking forward, um, I'd like to touch on the next steps about how we bring these usage models to life. Over the next six months, we'll be working with industry to integrate the guidance from these usage models into their roadmaps. Then in the following 12 months, we expect to see initial deployments coming to fruition. Realistically, some usage models may take longer to implement. In the meantime, work doesn't stop for the Alliance. We have the next tranche of usage models in progress and we'll start planning delivery dates after an, initial, uh, after an initial review of progress. I'll now turn to slide 16, which is the final slide. So today the ODCA will be making the eight initial release usage models available on the website. You can find it at www.opendatacenteralliance.org. To again emphasize, the intent of these usage, usage models is to help enterprises adopt cloud computing and service providers to meet customer needs. As a member of ODCA, I'd like to encourage others to join the Alliance to help shape the future of cloud computing. I understand we now have some time to answer questions and I will pass back to Alison. Thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Um, for all of you who have been listening in, thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this webcast. Please submit questions via the chat pane and hit the raised hand if you'd like to submit a question. The first question today is, you talk a lot about standardization of services and security. How do you ensure that there's room for differentiation and innovation in this standard model? Yeah, I can, uh, I can help answer that question. It's uh, Matt again. Look, so one of the things we'd like to do here, uh, or one of the big pr uh, problems we face is, uh, is that we don't actually know what the vendors are offering. So essentially what we're looking to do here is to set a base level of standards. So these are minimum entry level standards for each level of, of security, for example, or you know, what, whichever the usage model we're talking about. Um, what we do allow, obviously, is for uh, other vendors to differentiate on both price and also capabilities. So they, they are welcome to offer above and beyond the uh, specifications which were in the existing usage model. So that, that's definitely one way we can let the, uh, the providers uh, uh, differentiate themselves in the market. Great. Thank you very much. Um, the Alliance has decided to um, bring vendors into to the organization. Can someone comment on how the group will ensure that these uh, vendors do not drive a particular strategy and, and the uh, customer voice is degraded? Uh, that's a really good question and um, it was one of the things that was uh, on my mind and, and uh, the, the team at NAB um, with getting a vendor or a series of vendors driving it in their own direction. Um, 
you know, for, for commercial reasons. Um, and we've been very careful as we've taken uh, each member on that uh, they understand that we want this as open as possible with the differentiation that uh, Matt just spoke about. Um, so look, so far um, we think in the seven months we've been going we've been able to uh, manage that and manage that well. Great. Uh, next question. How has uh, the process of prioritization worked within the work groups and where do you intend to focus next? Yeah, the, the technical coordination committee together with the steering committee really work through the prioritization. So that's, that's the main area that that comes from. Uh, where we're focusing on next is building out a number of those uh, roadmaps. We, we've got a number of items that we're looking at the prioritization, a couple in progress, but at this point in time we don't have a committed plan. We want to get through a first review. There have been a couple questions about private versus public cloud. Do you feel that the members of the Alliance are focused more on private implementations of cloud, public implementations, or um, a combination of hybrid cloud implementations? Uh, Dennis Curran here again. I, I think the members and certainly the steering committees will, members will always have large internal impl uh, implementations. But we're also focused very much on, on creating a market and generating cloud adoption. So, so I think it's going to be a very balanced view. Yeah, uh, it's Dennis McGee here. Um, look, I think there are um, efficient, efficiency benefits in both. Um, and um, as an adopter, um, I think you want to experiment potentially internally, but that's, that's my view of the world. Um, as you uh, start to get experience with security and regulators, uh, then you sort of spread your wings a bit. You talked a little bit about uh, what we should be looking forward to in terms of roadmap integration and uh, solutions deployment. Can you talk a little bit about what you would expect an, a member to do with these usage models in terms of their use? Yes, yeah, so um, what we um, so from a member perspective, what we'd like to see is uh, effectively they, they help drive these uh, these standards. So uh, some of them are quite prescriptive around things we'd like to see. So from a vendor perspective, they're things like um, we want these sorts of minimum se uh, settings for security, or we want these sorts of things for performance. So effectively, as a member, we'd like to see them help push these standards and uh, and and basically appeal to their uh, their vendors and providers to help uh, st uh, set these up. Yeah, just a Fantastic. further comment on that. Sure. Ultimately, we'll see these built into uh, tenders and requests for proposals, which really do start to drive adoption as the industry really see what we're on about. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to find the usage models, um, where would I find them? I think that's on the slide, actually. Yeah, I think they're actually available uh, to Matt here. I think they're available uh, directly on the uh, Open Data Center Alliance website, which is Great. that last slide, if you can see it. And then uh, one final question. Um, how would you look at uh, the next 12 months in terms of success for the organization? Um, there's no easy questions, is there? Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, Look, we would um, like to see a lot of interest firstly generated, um, a lot more input to usage cases, uh, things that are uh, bothering potential adop uh, adopters uh, and potential service providers. Um, and then we can start to build out uh, more usage models that are practical for the industry uh, and, and particularly early adopters. So. Um, I guess we would like to see some service providers step up to the plate um, because as a service user we're usually fairly um, tight-lipped about what we are doing internally or externally. 
Um, so look, good input from the industry um, and uh, input into the current use cases and future ones that actually help build this out um, well. Uh, the other thing that we um, uh, are seriously doing is, is working with other standards bodies. And uh, if we can all work together, um, I think we can progress a lot faster. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, Matt, uh, Matt here. Just one other point on that, and, uh, and Dennis touched on it. So uh, one of the things we think here is key to this uh, initiative success is we are looking to work with industry, and we're also uh, very keen to work with our industry partners to help drive these standards. So. Uh, we don't want to be uh, in conflict with work other industry groups are doing, so this is, a, this is very much a complementary uh, initiative. Great. And then I lied. There is one more question. Um, <laughs> is there a tick of approval, um, something that a some sort of mark of approval that the Alliance can give cloud computing suppliers if they meet their minimum conditions? If so, when would you implement that? We have talked about that at the steering committee level. We haven't got that in place yet. Uh, it is something we will continue to think about. But the, Matt, Matt is wanting to also add to this, so I think I might pass to him. Yes, so, so just on that, so um, the, the provider assurance usage model talks to that it's in some perspective. So ideally what we'd like to have, and, and look, this is a best case, you know, this is what, we, what we'd ideally like to see, uh, is that there is a certification body of, of sorts set up to actually go off and do this auditing against these standards. So that, that sort of provides us as consumers with a level of confidence that the security settings of the, or the, the, the settings that they're telling us they're, they're offering us are actually being adhered to and, uh, and met. Uh, and if I could just add to what Dennis and Matt have already said, um, that would also um, potentially ease um, uh, getting approvals from regulators. Thank you very much, guys, for, for doing such a great job explaining the announcement to everyone, and thanks for all the attendees for participating today. Uh, that concludes the webcast. If you'd like to share this with friends, this will be available on the Alliance website uh, later today. And if you have any other questions, please submit them to uh, our Alliance representatives and they will help get, get them answered. Thanks very much, and have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you.